Number 71. Using the standard enthalpy of formation data in Appendix G, determine which bond is stronger, the SF bond in SF4 gas or in SF6 gas. Okay. So, I did go to the back of the appendix in a textbook to find out just the substances and their delta H values that we're going to use. But now, let's just take it away, right? We can only use those enthalpy values. And remember, an enthalpy is the delta H. This is uh, your energy in the form of heat. So it's your heat energy, whether you're going to be uh, absorbing an X amount of heat or releasing it. We have to just take that enthalpy value and find out which bond is stronger. And when we're talking about bonds and whether one is stronger or not, this has to be translated into a certain bond energy. And remember, a bond energy is just the amount of energy. So let's just say that I have a bond with X and Y. Right, doesn't matter whether it's a double or a single, you know, triple, whatever. The bond energy is always the amount of energy in uh, to break the bond, right? And when you break the bond, the two elements that are forming the bond are now just chilling by themselves. Now, just know that whenever we're trying to find a bond energy, the compound that we're looking for is always going to be in a gas. Uh, substance and the elements when they break up those are going to be gases as well okay so we're trying to find that bond energy aka the energy needed to break a certain bond in a compound and we want to know which one is stronger the stronger the bond this can kind of relate to everyday life right if you have a bestie you know a best friend uh, in which you have a strong bond, you have a strong relationship or, you know, with your family or who, whoever you have a strong bond with, um, it's going to take a lot of effort for somebody to come in and try to sever that bond, right? Because that bond is so strong. Um, so in terms of bond energy, the stronger the bond means the higher amount of bond energy. It takes a lot of energy to come in there and try to break that bond between those two elements. So we just need to find the bond energy between SF4 and SF6. So we'll just do one by one, right? Now remember, SF4, or any of these, we want to break those bonds. So we'll say SF4 is going to be broken right? And that has to be in the gas state. And when all those bonds break, you don't want any bonds on the right hand side. So that means that all your elements are just chilling by themselves. So in this case, sulfur is going to be chilling and the fluorine is going to be chilling. And they're both going to be gases because bond energies, gases all around, gas, gas, gas. Now, some of you might say, well, wait a minute, Christina, right? Generally, when fluorine is by itself, isn't it a diatomic, right? Shouldn't it be F2? But if we look at the Lewis structure of F2, is there a bond there? Yes, there is. There's lone electrons here, but nobody cares. <laughs> it's, it's a single bond. Remember, when you're trying to find the bond energies, you're breaking everything so that they're not, there's no more bonds on the product side. Now all we have to do is just balance the equation, right? You have one sulfur, one sulfur, so that's all good. But then you got four fluorines, so I do have to put a four in front of the F. Now I'm just going to come in here and say, okay, I have my delta H values. So we will put, let's see, negative 728.43 there. And sulfur by itself is 278. 0.81 and 79.4. Okay, cool. So let's do SF6 now, right? Let's write out SF6 balanced equation and put the numbers to the equation. So when SF6 breaks down, oop, why did I put a four? But SF6, that's going to be a gas 
And remember, you're severing all ties. All the bonds are now broken and all the elements are chilling by themselves. So sulfur plus the fluorine, they're both gases because that's just what bond energies are in the gas form. And now we just have to balance. 1s, 1s, but now six fluorines, so I have to put a six in front of here. Let's put these numbers, negative 1,220.5, and then for the sulfur, same number, so 278.81, and 79.4. Uh, Just kidding, uh, yeah, that's actually right. Okay, but now where are we gonna go with this? Well, it's the enthalpy values, so we use Hess's law, right? Hess's law is this formula right here. It's the products, the sum of the products, minus the sum of the reactants, right? Any delta H for our whole entire reaction, Rxn just means reaction. This little notch up here just means that you're using standard values. It's going to be equal to the sum and that just means you're just gonna add up the sides. The sum of all the products minus the sum of all your reactants. So in essence, it's products minus reactants, but we have to combine the products and the reactants into one number. Now, for the SF4 one, I don't have to do much for the reactant side because it's just one SF4, but on the product side, I have sulfur plus fluorine. So I know that I have to sum up these two numbers, but just be mindful, watch those coefficients. If you have four fluorines, this 79.4 is only for one of them. So if you have four fluorines, you have to take that number and times it by the coefficient. In this case, it's four. Then you can take the uh, two and add them together. So let's just see what that is, 278.81 plus four times 79.4. And numbers look good, 278, that looks good, good. So I'm gonna put the new sum, 596.41 for the uh, product side. And now, let's just do the same for this side, right? So SF6 chilling by itself, I don't have multiple of them, so I don't have to worry about that but I just have to pay close attention for the product side because I have six fluorines here. So I have to take my fluorines and times by six. And since it's sulfur plus fluorine, I will add the two of them. That's the sum. So 278.81 plus six times the 79.4. That looks good. All right, so now we get a seven, let's put that in red, 755.21, beautiful. Now we have our sums on both sides, so we're gonna just plug it into the delta H. So the first one I'll do is, I guess the top one, actually, what I can do is maybe I could just put this over here so I can work alongside. So. This will be the space for SF4, and this will be the space for SF6. So let's do SF4. Delta H for the reaction is products minus reactants, 596.41 minus the reactant, which is negative 728.43. Okay, let's just find out that number. So 596, actually, what I can do is come up here, grab that number, minus a negative 728.43. Okay, so I got 1,324.84. This is very disorganized. 1,324.84. And that's kilojoules per mole. Okay, let's just find out the delta H for this side. So we'll do each step for both of them. So it'd be 755.21 minus the negative 1,220.5. Okay, 
Okay, delta H equals this number minus 1220.5. 1220.5, that checks out. Let's enter it. Okay. Negative 465.29 kilojoules per mole. Okay. Now, this is for the delta H to break down the entire molecule. So it, to break down all the bonds, if there's met, met multiple of them, all the bonds of SF4. Now, remember, when we're dealing with bond energy, we're only talking about one bond, right? One X to Y bond, not a whole compound. So let's just quickly draw out the Lewis structure for SF4. You could pause the video if you want to see if it matches mine, but sulfur would be in the middle, surrounded by the four hydrogens, one, two, three, four. And for this one, they would all have single bonds and the, f and the fluorines, did I say hydrogen? Every time I look at fluorine, hydrogen just comes to my mind. I always, I always do that. So fluorine, 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 fluorine. <laughs> Um, okay, so it looks like this. But now, if I look at that molecule, how many SF bonds do I have? Yeah, I got, I got four, right? One SF, two SFs, three SFs, four SFs. And if we just finish this Lewis structure, we will need uh, two dots around the sulfur, but that doesn't matter for bonds. Four, five, six, yep, okay. So... When we're dealing with the actual bond, I only want to find out for one of them. Since there's a total of four bonds in this, and this is the total, we're going to take that number and divide it by four bonds to get my true bond energy. So I'll say BE. So the bond energy here would be this value divided by four. Um, I mean, sig figs, we should only go to the tenths place, so 331.2 kilojoules per mole. All right. Whoop. So this is the true bond energy for the SF bond in SF4. Let's now go over here and see what's going on. Now, in this case, if you want to draw the Lewis structure, we have one sulfur in the middle, bound to six fluorines. So technically I need six single bonds. They all have Fs around them. And then if we just want to draw the, the, the dots, each fluorine would have three pairs or six total electrons around them. This is everyone's favorite part of drawing Lua structures. Um, cool. But now, how many total bonds are there? Yeah, we just said there's six, right? One, two, three, four, five, and six. So this is the whole entire reaction for the one molecule. But since you have six bonds, you want to take that and divide it by the six bonds to get the individual bond energy. BE. Now, as I'm writing this down, I'm like, wait a minute, hold on. Um, did anybody see this mistake? Did you? Did you? I, I definitely heard you screaming at me, <laughs> but um, I would have caught it because, and that's, I'm catching it now, because bond energies are always supposed to be positive values. So if you get a bond energy that's negative, go back. Something happens and Silly mistakes happen to the best of us. We just have to catch them. So that's why we have to know the theory behind values, whether they're positive, negative. So bond energies are always, always, always going to be positive. I see in here that I just minus the uh, 1,220.5, but I should have minus by a negative. So let's just quickly do that again. Minus by a negative 1220.5. And that's going to change the game. It's now a positive, whoop, whoop, 
positive 1975.71. But now the same thing is going on here. We have to take that, that, uh, wait a minute. We have to take that and divide it by the six bonds uh, that's in the compound. So now let's do it. BE, bond energy equals this divided by six. Okay, 329.2, I guess we'll round to the tenths place. So 329.9 kilojoules per mole. All right. Now this is very close because for the SF4, we have a bond energy of 331.2 kilojoules. For the SF6, we have a bond energy of 329. So a difference of only two kilojoules. But the stronger the bond, the higher the bond energy. So they wanted to know which bond was stronger. Technically, this bond is stronger because it is higher uh, by, actually, just kidding. Can Christina do math? I don't know. <laughs> this number is, is higher. 331 is higher than 329. So in this case, this is the stronger bond, but only by a little. So determine which bond is stronger, the SF bond in SF4 or the SF bond in SF6. It is, and maybe I'll just put it over here, the SF4 bonds. So maybe I'll say SF bond in, whoop, the SF4 bond in, the SF bond in SF4 is stronger. And that is the final answer. Okay. Whew. I think I need to eat something. <laughs> okay. Well, we got it done. I hope this helped you out. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. And I look forward to helping you in future lessons. Um, thank you so much for, you know, coming here. I love helping you guys out. And I'll talk to you soon, okay? Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.